So it's an empirical fact that an organism's metabolic rate scales with its mass raised to the three quarters power. This observation had been known for quite some time and it posed a puzzle. There wasn't an explanation for why this three quarter power law behavior is seen. The most um, plausible other explanation that metabolic rate is related to surface area to volume ratio would predict an exponent of two thirds, which very clearly is not what is seen. So there's this puzzle. In the late 1990s, Jeffrey West, Jim Brown, and Brian Enquist put forward a theory of metabolic scaling. It's um, a mechanistic explanation for why three-quarter power law scaling is prevalent in metabolic systems. So what I'll do in this video is give a sketch of the key pieces of their, um, of their argument. I'm not going to work through any of the mathematics because it's quite long and involved and a little bit beyond the scope of this course, but I want to sort of highlight uh, their basic thinking and reasoning and some of the assumptions behind their model. And then I'll conclude by pointing you to a couple of references that you can consult if you want to get into some of the more mathematical details. So I'll sketch the argument and highlight some of the assumptions behind the West Brown Enquist theory for metabolic scaling. Um, again, I'm not going to get into any of the mathematical details, and at the end of this video, I'll include uh, a bunch of references both to the original work and then also to some papers that you can consult um, if you want to dig into this further. Okay, so the West Brown Enquist scaling theory begins with the assertion, the claim, that the metabolic rate is determined by the properties um, of the vascular network. So the metabolic rate is determined by properties of vascular network. So the vascular network carries blood to cells and then um, delivers oxygen so those cells can respire and do things that cells do. And then this same network also carries away waste products from cells, carbon dioxide and other things. And that's what um, sets the metabolic rate uh, for an organism. And moreover, this vascular network, the system of arteries, is fractal. It's self-similar. So the vascular network is fractal. So let me sort of draw a sketch of what that what that means. So the picture here is we have a network, there would be a vessel, and draw this a little bit longer. And then this net network branches into smaller vessels, which branches into smaller vessels, which branches into smaller vessels still. Eventually, the smallest vessels, those are the capillaries, and that's where um, all action is, where the oxygen is delivered and the wastes are removed. So um, perhaps, this is not going to be a great drawing but should get the idea across. So the idea here is we have a vessel at some level in the network, and then it splits into three vessels. For, ex just for example, it's just an illustration. And then these vessels themselves, oh boy, split into three smaller vessels and so on. And so um, WBE assumed that this network is fractal. And so that means right, self-similar, scale-free. So in particular, when we go from this level to this level, we're always going to see three times as many vessels. We go from this level to this level, the number of vessels goes up by three. From this level to that level, not drawn yet, 
um, shows again, one, two, three, that we're always seeing three. Additionally, if it's self-similar, um, the ratio of this length to this length is the same as the ratio of this to that. Right, so that at any scale, wherever we are in this network, and it would go on for many, many levels, 22 or so in a person, um, as we go from the top level, the big pipe, to the next smallest, to the next smallest, um, the length decreases by a fixed amount, and the radius decreases by a fixed amount. So those are all just geometric statements um, that go along with this assertion, this claim, that the vascular network is fractal. The next step in the logic that produces the scaling theory is to um, state that the flow through this network is optimized. So let me just write that. So flow is optimized. And what that means is in order for the flow to be optimal, to not um, slow down or sort of have any traffic jam, so to speak, the cross-sectional area <clears throat> at each level has to be the same. So here, there's a certain amount of fluid flowing through determined by this area. And so the area of these three pipes, these three vessels, has to add up to be equal to this area. And the area of these three vessels has to add up to be equal to that area. Otherwise, the um, space through which the blood flows would be getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and um, it would get harder and harder to push things through. It would be suboptimal. So this statement of optimality just says that this area should match, these areas should match those areas. And that gives another geometric constraint that relates um, branching number and length ratios and radius ratios to each other. So that's another um, key piece of the scaling theory. And there are a few um, other lines of reasoning, lines of attack that they use. So let me mention those. So the other, the next is that capillaries and organisms are all the same size. So, for example, um, an elephant has a bigger heart than me, it has a bigger aorta, it would have more levels in the network, more um, branching, call this level 0, level 1, level 2, and so on. But my capillaries and the size, um, and the elephant's capillaries are the same size. And for that matter, a mouse has the same size capillaries as I do as well it would have less levels, and a mouse aorta is certainly smaller than my aorta, but we all share the same capillary size, and that's just set basically by cell size. Capillaries are um, basically sort of like a single cell wall vessel. So all organisms have the same size capillary. That enters into the uh, mathematics of their um, theory. Um, and then another piece of geometry is that these networks um, are, fill the volume of the system. Networks. So networks fill the volume. So if we have a creature, a mouse or an elephant or a whale or a bat or a person, the capillaries have to service all of the cells. Cells need the service provided by this network, right? Because they carry resources, oxygen, and they carry away wastes. So that means that capillaries have to spread out to fill the entire volume of the creature. That doesn't mean capillaries are everywhere, but that means that every cell has to be close enough to a capillary that it can get the benefits, the services, the, the nutrients, resources, that the capillaries provide. So this network is said to be volume filling. And so then that's going to relate the number of capillaries to the overall volume and hence mass of the creature. And additionally, 
um, if you go one level um, up from a capillary, so you have a capillary and then you have the vessel that's one size larger, that also has to fill, um, fill out um, the, the volume. And so at all levels, we have these, this network has to spread out um, into the entire uh, organism in order to provide the service. <coughs> Excuse me. The last um, piece of the argument then relates all of this to metabolic rate. And so it says that the metabolic rate is proportional to the rate of blood flow. So metabolic rate So metabolic rate is proportional to the blood flow through the capillaries. So this is another key piece of the argument that West Brown and Enquist use in their in their theory. So metabolic rate, how uh, the rate at which you need to eat food, the rate at which you process food, well, is determined by the rate at which uh, those nutrients can be delivered to um, to cells, and also the rate at which right, oxygen and and so on can be delivered to cells through the blood. And so uh, the blood, the total blood flow through the capillary, that rate is going to be proportional to the metabolic rate. So then what they did was they combined these um, statements, these assumptions, which I think for the most part are pretty well established and well, well grounded. And they did basically a bunch of geometry and some mathematics to relate um, a number of different uh, sort of scaling properties sort of hinges on this that they're filling out the volume and the volume here is is three-dimensional so organisms are three-dimensional and if one does a bunch of work mathematically with this one ends up with the metabolic scaling result which is the metabolic rate y is proportional to mass to the three quarters power. So this provides an explanation, a mechanistic explanation for why we see three quarters in this exponent and not two thirds. The preceding discussion obviously wasn't a mathematical derivation of the three quarter power law scaling result. It's, as I said, just a sketch of the main arguments and line of thought that goes into its derivation. Um, so let me conclude this video by mentioning some resources you could consult if you want to learn a little bit more or dig into some of the mathematical details. The original paper by West Brown and Enquist um, from 1997 is uh, a landmark paper and important for historical reasons, but I find it very difficult to read. Um, the writing is dense and the notation is confusing. So I would recommend, um, by all means, check that paper out. But I would recommend if you, if you want to work through some of the mathematics yourself, that's probably not the best place to start. There's um, a review paper from 2008 by Savage, Deeds, and Fontana, Sizing Up Allometric Scaling Theory. Um, and that is, a, I think, a very clear and sort of balanced overview of the West Brown Enquist theory. It's fairly technical, but also fairly clear, and could be a good place to start, both to learn some of the mathematical details and learn about some of the strengths and limitations of the theory. The best um, elementary treatment that I've seen uh, of the WBE result is from the math modeling book by Tung. Um, this is a great book overall, um, really interesting choices of models, very clear writing, and his treatment of metabolic scaling is really nice. The argument, the mathematics involved is mostly algebra and geometry with a little bit of, um, at one point there's a series one has to sum, but it should be, uh, just one notch above the level of math involved in this course. 
And it's not even that the math is difficult, it's just a long argument, something that takes a while to go through. It has a number of different steps. So if you want to dig into the mathematical details, I'd recommend getting your hands on this book if you can, and or consulting the um, review article by Savage et al. And some of uh, West Brown inquests and subsets thereof, some of their subsequent papers and some of the review articles um, in the mid-2000s um, also give a pretty good overview of the theory.